Hey everyone hope everyone's doing well so today we're going to discuss anion gap so if you're somebody who hasn't watched my arterial blood gas video please click on the link in the description box watch that video and come right back so let's dive into the topic of anion gap it is basically a very important diagnostic tool while looking at metabolic acidosis It took me a while to get a hang of this concept but I have simplified it as much as possible. It's basically the level of cations which are the positively charged ions versus anions which are the negatively charged ions in the serum. Our body it follows the law of electroneutrality. That means in all body compartments the number of anions and cations should be equal. So this is what the equation should look like. The major measured cations are sodium and potassium whereas the anions measured by this equation is chloride and bicarbonate. So if the serum is actually neutral anion gap should be neutral following the law of electroneutrality. So why isn't it neutral? Why isn't it zero? It's because while sodium and potassium account for the majority of the positive charge we're ignoring a number of unmeasured anions like phosphate sulfate the anion component of organic acids and also negatively charged plasma proteins like albumin from this equation so if the gap increases this anion so so called anion gap increases it means that there are a greater number of these unmeasured anions in the serum this is what accounts for the anion gap anion gap is nothing but the unmeasured anions which are not included in this equation so what is the normal anion gap let's bring the formula back sodium plus potassium equals to chloride plus bicarbonate but sometimes most labs only the sodium value is taken because potassium is proportionately less in the serum so this is what the formula should look like sodium minus chloride plus bicarb equals to 0 If you put in the normal values this is what the answer will be it will be 12 milliequivalents per liter putting it into a range which is plus minus 4 it should be 8 to 16 so 8 to 16 milliequivalents per liter is the normal serum anion gap this may vary according to labs and according to the equation whether it includes sodium and potassium or just the sodium component so how is it useful in metabolic acidosis Acidosis can be classified as high anion gap or normal anion gap. So this can be helpful in correctly identifying the cause of acidosis. So while thinking high anion gap, think increase in organic acids in the bloodstream. So some examples of organic acids are lactic acids, keto acids, formic acids, which is a metabolite of methanol, and oxalic acid, which is a metabolite of ethylene glycol. So conditions in which these are increased are lactic acidosis for example in salicylate overdose or shock ketoacidosis in DKA formic acid accumulation in methanol poisoning and oxalic acid accumulation in ethylene glycol poisoning let's take lactic acidosis as an example in solution it's present as two entities it's present as lactate and h plus ion Lactate is the anion component and H plus ion is the cation uh, component. In this, lactate is not accounted for in the anion gap calculation. So it basically belongs in the unmeasured anions. In lactic acidosis, the H plus component is buffered by the bicarbonate. So this is what the equation looks like after buffering. I'm sure all of you are familiar with this equation. So in the buffering process, the bicarb is decreased in the serum but the serum remains electroneutral because although there is decrease in bicarb there is more lactate accounting for the anion component of it and this lactate component is not measured in the anion gap calculation so this appears as a high anion gap in the solution So what about normal anion gap acidosis? Let's look at the most common causes. The most common cause is diarrhea and another important cause is RTA or renal tubular acidosis. 
There are many types of RTA which is beyond the scope of this video. But the most common type is where bicarbonate reabsorption in the distal convoluted tubule is impaired. So in diarrhea, what really happens? In diarrhea, the bicarbonate is lost. So bringing back the equation, if in this equation the bicarb is lost, to form carbonic acid, we need bicarb to buffer the H+. So here, due to its loss, the serum is acidotic. In these cases where the bicarb is lost, the kidney compensates it by reabsorbing increased amount of chloride. So this is a normal anion gap acidosis because the loss of bicarbonate is compensated by chloride and not by some other unmeasured anion. Both bicarbonate and chloride are accounted for in our anion gap equation. So in this case, it's also called a hyperchloremic acidosis because the loss of bicarb is compensated by an increased amount of chloride. In this case, the anion gap remains normal and the serum remains electroneutral. You may ask why this is not the case in vomiting. In vomiting, both bicarbonate and H plus ion is lost, not just bicarbonate. Similarly, in renal tubular acidosis, bicarbonate is lost, so chloride is increasingly reabsorbed to compensate. So even if all of that information went over your head, just remember that high anion gap acidosis means increased organic acid and normal anion gap acidosis means decreased bicarbonate which is compensated by increased chloride and a normal anion gap is 8 to 16. So here's an example for you to solve. I will give you 10 seconds to solve this one. Your time starts now. So here the anion gap is 10, which is in the normal range. So coming to the causes, I'm just going to put a couple of slides, which you guys can screenshot and put it up on your wall or just memorize it a bit later. Uh, but these are the very famous mnemonics which are present everywhere. So, yep, that brings us to the end of this video. If you guys like that video, please give this video a like, subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on my social media platforms where I share daily medical content. So that's about it. I hope all you wonderful people have an amazing day and I'll see you for my next video.